Welcome to a calendar tag album tutorial. I'm Shari Philomahala here at the Graphic 45 office. And in this tutorial, I'm excited to teach you how to take our large black tags and Graphic 45's fabulous new calendar collection, Fashion Forward, and turn it into a little fun DIY calendar. In this tutorial, you'll also learn how to create some fun, stylish pockets that are great for holding your photos and mementos. And then we'll also, we'll also teach you how to take Graphic 45 embellishments to really jazz up your projects. Um, just showing you how to use our new die cut assortments to really take your projects to that next level as well as our matte pearl gems. This project is a part of our Club G45 series. This is volume two for 2020 and both this tag album as well as this super fun DIY treat box that we'll be creating with our leftovers in a separate tutorial have been created for us by the wonderful Maria Cole. So if you have not yet subscribed to Club G45, go ahead and hop on over to g45papers.com and join the club. And then we'll go ahead and start creating this fabulous interactive tag album. This month in your Club G45 kit, you'll be getting some fashion forward die cut assortments. There's a lot to work with in here. You'll also be getting some matte pearl gems with 144 pieces. You'll be getting two different sets of our large black tags. You get six pieces in each of these along with these great little binding rings. You'll be getting a full color project sheet with step-by-step -step directions. And then our Fashion Forward 12 by 12 collection pack. So in here, there's a lot to work with. You get two of each 12 double-sided 12 by 12 papers, as well as these great uh, cardstock sticker sheets. So, so much fun and bright, vivid colors this month for our project. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when creating this calendar tag album is grab your project sheet. If you are a subscriber, this is in your box. Uh, if not, if you're following along with your own supplies and goodies, you can print this out on our website at g45papers.com. We have an inspiration tag, and then at the bottom of the inspiration selections, there's a project sheets, and you can find a whole bunch of project sheets over there, including this one. Step one, we are taking some black cardstock and we're gonna cut up two of them to be four and five eighths of an inch by six inches. And then using a corner rounder, uh, any corner rounder that you have will do, we are just going to round the top two corners of each piece. So I'm using the half inch side of my corner chomper. Step two with our August sheet we are going to be using the b side for this and we are going to be cutting out two pieces that are going to be three and five eighths by six and three quarters and then we'll have two pieces that are going to be four and three eighths by five and seven eighths and then we're going to have a scrap bit left over uh, that we'll be using for the bottom of our cover and these will all be cover pieces step three we're going to be taking our january cut apart and we're going to be pulling apart some of these elements the first one we want are these two images and we want to make sure that we keep these together so our total measurement is going to be eight and a half by six inches wide or eight and a half wide and six inches tall and then we are going to be taking uh, these two pieces and these we also want to make sure that we keep those together so we want to keep our dancing woman and out of the old, out with the old, in with the new. And this measures to be two inches by six inches. And then we're going to take our Oh Happy Day image here. And we want this one to be three and three quarters inches wide by five and one eighth to five and a fourth inch tall. And last, we are going to be taking this border that has the florals as well as that geometric uh, pattern on the side and we are going to be cutting this down to be three and seven eighths inches. So then we're going to go ahead and repeat this step for all 12 months. However, for the month of August, we will be uh, cutting out an extra little bit. So we'll go through and show you 
each of the pieces we're going to need each month. March, April, May, June, July, August, and this month we are cutting out an extra little bit from our August paper. This is going to be used for the cover of our album. So this is going to be one and one eighth by five and one eighth. So this piece we'll be using for the cover so we can set that with our other cover pieces and then keep these all together for our August papers. September, October, November, and last but not least, December. Step four, we're gonna be grabbing our two large tag packs that came in your kit, and we are gonna be removing eight of those tags. With those eight tags, we're gonna be taking a scoreboard and our bone folder, and we are just gonna be scoring at the one inch mark. So just laying these down horizontally across the top, so it goes to about, uh, it looks like just over eight and a half inches and we'll just be scoring at the bottom at one inch on all eight of our tags. Step five, we're going to be taking four of our tags that we had just scored and with the grommet side down, so the beveled side will be down, we are going to be facing those down. And then just to keep track of them, I'm going to be writing with a pencil, just I'm going to be numbering them. So. I'm just gonna number them in the center because we'll be adding paper over the top. So once we're all done, you won't be able to see that. So I'll just number the one, two, three, four. And then taking some dry adhesive, we are gonna add that to towards the bottom of our tags one, two, and three. We'll be leaving tag four uh, unadhered. And then once we've done that, we can go ahead and fold up on those creases. Next, we are going to be adhering tag one to tag two. So I'm going to be taking off my paper to my dry adhesive. And now I'm going to adhere tag two onto that little strip. But I want to make sure to leave about a fourth of an inch of space between tag one and tag two on the bottom. So just eyeballing that about a fourth of an inch once you find the placement that you like, you can go ahead and burnish that down. See from the side, we have about a fourth of an inch of room between the two tags. Next, we are going to adhere tag two to tag three. So grabbing tag three, we'll just repeat that step. So I'm gluing or adhering this onto the bottom flap. So the adhesive is on the top and then my bottom flap does not have any adhesive. So I'm just folding that so I can make sure that I can see my tags one and two and making sure I'm getting a good straight positioning about a fourth of an inch away. Once you have that positioning, go ahead and burnish And lastly, I'm going to adhere tag four to tag three. So just repeating those steps I've done before. This one doesn't have adhesive on this uh, back side. So just so you know, you want to make sure that you're still adhering these down correctly. So I folded it over. I've got my grommet up here and this is folded over. And now I'm going to find my placement fourth of an inch away from tag three. So once you're done, it should look like this, tags one through four. Step seven, we have located the other four tags we've already scored and now I'm going to just mark on here which number they are. So five, six, seven, and eight. So making sure that these are grommet side down so you can see I've got the rough unruly edge. 
uh, facing me and the grommet side is down on our tag five we are going to be adding our dry adhesive and we are going to do that on the full one inch section so a little different than our last step tag five we will just adhere and then on tag six seven and eight we'll just be adding a nice line of adhesive on towards the bottom for step eight, we are gonna be repeating step six, but in a different order. So we're gonna be adhering eight to seven, and then six to seven, and then five to six. So I've taken off that adhesive. My beveled grommet side is down, and now I have folded my tag seven. So the bottom lip that has the adhesive is tucking under. And now I am going to find my placement to be about a fourth of an inch. Like so. So once I flip this over, both my tags will have those rounded grommets on the front. And now they're about a fourth of an inch apart. Now I'm going to adhere tag six to tag seven using the same method. So folding this under. And then we'll adhere tag five to tag six. And then looking at that side view, you can see that these are all nicely spaced a fourth of an inch apart. Step nine, we are going to be adhering tags five to tags four. So we will be completing this album. And I have my grommet side down on both of those. And then I'm just going to adhere the bottom of my one inch part to the bottom of the one inch part on tag four on tag five. And burnish that down. So in the end, you will have a nice tag structure that looks like this. And then once we add that binding ring to the top, you'll see it has a really nice, nice look to it. You're grabbing our two pieces that have been cut to four and three eighths by five and seven eighths. And we are just going to round those using that same corner rounder we used on our black cardstock. So just the top two corners on this floral and then we'll take some adhesive and adhere those onto our black pieces that match leaving a nice eighth of an inch border on the top and sides step 11 we're taking our two pieces that are three and five eighths by six and three quarters inches and we are going to be rounding the tops on those as well and then we are going to flatten out our tag album so we have one and eight on either side and then adding adhesive to the back side of all our large tags now we can adhere this down just right in the center step 12 we're going to be gluing this just behind tags one and then the other one behind tag eight so it will be flush with the bottom and just peeking out uh, just on either side evenly Step 13 from our die cut assortment packs, we are going to be grabbing out these two pieces. So the frame and then the insert. And then once you have those together, you can just put them back together as one. 
And then with some clear tape, I'm going to be adhering this back in place. We're going to be using the reverse side, the black side. So it doesn't matter that I put tape on that side because well, this is the side we'll have up on our cover of our album. Next, taking a binding ring from our large tags. So we'll have get one in each pack and we'll be using one that will be going um, to hold our album closed when we're not using it. And then the other one we're going to be using as a decoration. So I'm just going to be using some tape, some clear tape to tape it down. And then just taking some liquid adhesive, some whatever uh, heavy duty liquid adhesive you have, uh, just to reinforce that. So just kind of lifting that up and then adding a nice layer of adhesive underneath. And then we'll go ahead and let that dry. While that's drying, I'm going to be taking these uh, 3D foam circles in black and I'm going to be adding some foam adhesive to the back side of this piece. And I just want to make sure I don't co cover up any of those super cute little die cut holes in the corners. Of course, if you don't have uh, black foam adhesives, you can always pick up some adhesive on our website, g45papers.com, or for some extra dimension, you can always use uh, chipboard sheets as well. So if you have black chipboard sheets in your stash, you can uh, use those or layer them up to add extra dimension and just adhere those on. And once you're ready with your foam adhesive, we are going to attach this to the front of our tag album. And it's just gonna go up towards the top, about an eighth of an inch of the pink on either side. And then we're gonna grab these other pieces from our die cut assortments. And we are going to adhere our oval frame just back inside. Just putting the clear tape just on the black background. So now that it's adhered back, we will glue this onto towards the center of our frame, just um, about a half an inch from the top. And then we'll adhere down, live with passion. And that's going to go on our black frame as well, just about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. And then taking some liquid adhesive, or if you have a glue pen, then we are going to adhere these cute little flourishes down as well. And then once you have everything down where you want it to go, I'm just going to dab it lightly with a paper towel getting off any excess adhesive. And now taking our matte pearl gems, we're going to be using 12 of the medium ones and those we are going to line up just on the sides of our frame. And I'm going to reinforce these um, with some extra liquid glue just to make sure that they uh, withstand all the love and attention this album's going to get. So just a little tip, it's easiest if you want to just place six little beads on each side of adhesive and then put your little matte pearl gems on top of there. And you can see this adhesive hasn't yet dried, but once it does, it's going to look just stunning. Step 15, we're taking this April die cut piece and then we're going to be putting this on the inside cover. And because our album's going to be going um, both forward and backwards so we can fit all 12 months in here, you can really put this any way you want. I'm going to be putting it down so when my album is opened up, it will be facing right side up with the grommet down. But either way, there's no real right way or wrong way with this album. 
And then of course, just dabbing off any excess adhesive. Step 16, we have got our bone folder and our scoreboard out again. And now we are gonna score right in between our two images. So whatever uh, lines up best is where you wanna score. Mine happens to be at four and a half inches. Yours should be approximately about the same. So this is our image now. And when we fold it, we want it to be closed like this. So when you open it up, we'll have our calendar on the left and our uh, woman on the right. And then the front of our panel is gonna be this nice blue. So for 16A, we are taking our uh, two pieces that we have left together, the out with the old, in with the new, and we are going to adhere this to create a nice little pocket. So just adding adhesive on the backhand side on the top, bottom, and the back of the right, but when you flip it over, it is the left-hand side. and that's going to adhere down on our flap. So you can see we have created a nice little pocket and that's where our Oh Happy Day will just slip right inside. I'm gonna make sure that that dries before I slip that in there. So next I'm gonna be taking from our die cut assortments this purple butterfly, black on one side and purple on the other. I'm gonna be going purple side up for this and then taking three of our silver dot or silver uh, matte gems. I'm going to be taking two of the small and one of the medium and I'm going to put these down the center of my butterfly. Now you can see that that looks super cute and really adds some nice dimension onto our butterfly. And then adhering adhesive onto the back of the right hand side. This is just going to go in between our two cut aparts that form our pocket on a nice little angle. Just making sure there's more of the butterfly over the pocket than not. And then once everything has dried, you'll see that this fits in there beautifully. And we are really creating a nice little page. Next, we're gonna round our top two corners. Just giving everything that nice cohesive look. And now we can go ahead and adhere this bottom flap to our tag album. So we're making sure that this is on, we're adhering this down onto tag two. So after we've created our flap element, we're gonna flip this over and add some adhesive onto the back. I did have a, a little bit of trouble with my first time placement, so now I have learned and I will be showing you the correct way. So now when placing this on the back onto our tag number two, we want this to be about an eighth of an inch from the bottom of our tag two, and then about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the black tag on the right hand side. So it does showcase off a bit of that black tag. And then when you close this, things should look pretty much centered from left to right with our decorative paper. So now the last thing that we're gonna do on this page is taking that border that we trimmed out and having that nice geometric pattern on the bottom. That is going to adhere just up to the top flush with our beautiful lady on the inside. And then we are gonna flip that over and then we'll just trim to fit. So just round at the corner. And if there's any overhang, you can go ahead and trim the overhang, making sure you don't wanna cut into our flap since that does have a nice intended overhang. So now that we've got our border all done up, January flaps open and is looking good. Now we can move on to February on our tag three with the grommet side up. And the beautiful part about this tutorial is that it all repeats itself. So you already know how to do it and I'll just walk you through one more time. So taking our cut aparts with the calendar, we are going to 
score just right in between the calendar and our cut apart image at four and a half. And then this will fold over and this will be our front where we're going to create our pocket. Just move that. And then with this two by six inch piece that we left those together, we're going to be creating a left handed pocket this time around. So we'll put it on our adhesive on the top, bottom, and the on the back side, it'll be on the right hand side. And then we'll adhere this down so it's flush with the top left hand side and, and then we'll round those top two corners. And then with this cut apart, we're just going to add a, a sticker on the front and back and these two nice little matte black pearl gems. So I'm just picking a sticker that has a matching shape to it. And then I've got one, the lady with the flower bouquet on one side, and this is going to be great for a photo. And then on the other side, I've got the sentiment. And then that is going to tuck into our pocket that we've created. Beautiful. And then adding adhesive on the backhand side, leaving about a half of an inch on uh, the back right. We are going to be doing the same thing that we did when adhering on the January. So leaving about an eighth of an inch on the bottom and the right hand side of the tag. And then taking our little border piece, we're going to add this to the top. And then just from flipping it around on the back side, we will cut off any excess of that border and then just trimming around our corners. So now you can see how easy it was to do February now that we know what we're doing. And the rest of the months, we're just going to follow that same pattern. So just follow along as I speed through this. All right, so we've completed up to step 21 now. So you can see we have our January done, February, March, April, May, June. And then on our last page, our tag number eight, we are going to be adding this die cut just to the back, giving it a nice clean look. And then once we've done that, we'll flip this over and then we'll start on our next six months. So we'll start on July.
So now we have finished our last six months with July, August, September, October, November, and December. So we are almost done. Now we just need to measure the bottom of our base. So this is step 29 and we are just going to be measuring this and then with that scrap paper we cut in the very beginning we'll just cut that to fit so because everyone um, put together their bases a little bit differently just since we were eyeballing that fourth of an inch mine looks like mine is at two and seven eighths so i am just going to be trimming my paper down to two and three quarters and then on this side it will be it looks like it's three and seven eighths so I will do three and three quarters so taking my scrap paper so Two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And that fits just perfectly there on the bottom. So I'll adhere it down with a little bit of a black border on all four sides. I can kind of try to burnish that down with our bone folder. So this border piece that we cut at the very beginning, I did not put down on my cover in the beginning, so I'm gonna do that now. I've just trimmed it down just to be about one and three quarters inches. And I'm gonna use some liquid adhesive so I can kind of slide it right into place. So adding some liquid adhesive on the back, I want my border in the U shape just on the bottom and then in the center of our binding ring and it'll be flush with our pink paper. So there we go. And then for step 30, our last step, we're gonna take our second binding ring and 12 inches of coordinating ribbon. And then with that ribbon, we are just going to tie this into a cute festive bow. So you could use black or ivory gold, whatever you want that matches. And since there's so many gorgeous colors in this line, it shouldn't be hard to find a nice ribbon to add onto your ring. And then once you've added the ribbon and trimmed your edges, you can open up that binding ring and thread it through all your tags. And there you have it. We have a beautiful calendar tag album featuring every month so you can go ahead and use this as a perpetual calendar you can um, also uh, add photos throughout the year and have this be your 2020 um, album however you want to use it we want to see how you're going to use it so be sure to share your projects with us on um, instagram or on our graphic 45 community page on facebook and use that graphic 45 hashtag and also, if you're looking for more tutorials like this one, you're going to want to be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and then hit that notification bell so you know when we have new awesome tutorials and collection reviews up. We thank you so much for joining us and happy paper crafting.